Welcome back. Today we're going to talk a little bit about how to run your gun effectively. And what I mean by that is how to stick with your gun and get a second shot on target as fast as possible. And even that first shot. There's a couple do's and don'ts and some people may have different opinions than mine, but this is how I get my shots off as fast as I can while still maintaining accuracy and most importantly, sticking with my gun. As shooters, we work really, really hard to build a good cheek wilt, especially when we're taking a tougher shot. But if you do it on every single shot, it's going to help you a lot, especially the close ones, those gimmies that you don't pay much attention to. You still need your crosshairs to be where they're supposed to be, and you still need to squeeze the trigger nicely. Now, squeezing the trigger doesn't mean it has to be slow. Squeezing the trigger means it has to be nice and controlled, not a herky-jerk. Let's do a couple of those, and I'll show you what I mean. If I showed you that group right now, you'd call me a liar. <laughs> but point of fact is, my hand doesn't leave, my cheek doesn't leave, and that's the biggest thing. I know so many people that pop their head up to see what's going on. This is what's going to show you what's going on. So make sure you keep your cheek weld right there, because if you do, you're always ready for a follow-up shot. And even if you're hunting and you're taking close range shots, if you miss, these air guns are quiet. Sometimes you get a follow up or you're just in competition. Look at RMAC, look at the speed shooting. Um, Matt Dupper runs that impact like he owns it because he does. But my point is that you really need to keep everything in line and there's no reason for you to do this. There's no reason for you to leave here and reach up and grab and break everything that you've got going on unless your gun's just not quite right for you. You know, impacts have a little bit longer of a throw than the crown, so if you have really short hands, you might have to leave here, but if you can find a pivot point, like on the back of that pistol grip to work the gun, you should. So I'm gonna run through a few shots, just so you can see how I don't leave, and you're gonna see it from the side point of view. Then I'm gonna put the scope cam on, and I'm gonna do it, and you're gonna see what I see through the scope, and you're gonna see that the crosshairs just barely make it to target and then the gun goes off again. Crosshairs don't get more centered on target because we're leaving them there longer. I understand wanting to make sure that your aim is good, but sometimes your best shot is the very first one you get. And there's no reason to have your crosshairs sit there for a good 10 seconds, making sure that they don't move. If they're on target, they're on target. The gun doesn't care, the projectile doesn't care, the animal cares, I bet you they wish you'd take your time. Maybe they can fly off. But anyway, I'm gonna run some shots here and show you how I like to shoot. So that's a little slowed down. If I'm going at full speed or I need a really quick follow up, it can get much faster. I'll show you what I mean. There's no reason to hold it longer. There's no reason to wait between shooting unless there's a safety issue or something else. If you have a free clear lane to shoot and your crosshairs are on your target, let the shot break. I'm not saying yank it. I'm just saying do everything you would do with a nice long slow squeeze more efficiently. Let's get some scope cam footage and you can see what I'm seeing. I just want to return to the shooting sequence for one second. Notice that my hand movements, though moving faster, are still acting in a consistent manner and that the trigger is squeezed to the rear. It's happening quick, but it's actually to the rear until I get visual confirmation of what happened with the first shot. There's no point in taking a second shot until you know what happened with the first. All right, so that is a plastic water bottle. It's about 25 yards away, and I want to show you the speed at which I would shoot it if I had multiple targets or missed a first shot and needed a follow-up. Remember, the idea is to break the shot when you have the shot, not to rush it and not to take an inordinate amount of time when you don't need it. So here's your first shot. Okay, and we need to hit it again, right? So get on it and 
There's no reason to take longer with the crosshairs. Well, I guess it's a dead squirrel. But my point is, once the crosshairs are on, you let the shot break. No hesitation. I know what you're thinking, but Keith, that was only 25 yards. You shoot a lot further than that. Norman, my favorite target. It's at 130 yards, and I'm gonna get behind the gun, and I'm gonna show you how I would shoot it. We're gonna aim for that center dot. And again, once everything's known, not a whole lot of reason to take your time. I'm gonna make a wing call, and then execute and correct if I'm wrong. That's the importance of a second shot. I mean, as a demo, that could not have gone any better. So, first shot, wind flag's telling me it's coming from the right. I believe it. Hold two MOA, and it lands four MOA to the right, into the wind. Really tricky spot here. So I immediately correct, fire another shot, and boom, it's right on the money. That's the importance. That's why we make second shots happen quickly, and that's why I hope this has helped you so that you can do the same. I know that was a really quick video. I know I ran through it, um, but to be honest, I'm late for dinner. But I wanted to pass along that to you. I think it's a really important shooting lesson to not break contact and to not just try and hold your crosshairs on something for no reason at all. Past the one, two, three second mark. But most importantly, make sure that when you're on, stay on. Don't pop up every time. You'll never get a nice correction shot if you're not looking through your scope and lined up to take it and make it happen. We out. Three, two. Done. Done, done.